So this is going to be a video that I wish was created when I started React Native. I'm going to go over every single React Native core component, talk a little bit about what it is, and then a little bit about how I use it. Now, I think this is going to be great for those of you guys who are new to React Native, but uh, I think it will also be useful for those of you who are more experienced. Uh, it might be a bit of a refresher and learn about maybe some components that you don't use regularly. So let's start with the king of all React Native components, the fundamental building block of all your interfaces, the view component. The view component maps directly to the native view on whichever platform you're using. You can use it directly or you can build you know, custom views on top of it. If you're familiar with web development, this is the div of the React Native mobile world. The next component is the text component which is also a foundational component. And you use it anytime you want to display any type of text within your app. So you can't display text in a view. It has to be in a text component and then the text inside of a view. You can use this directly or you can you know, create your own kind of wrapper component around the text. And that's typically what I do. I have a generic you know, main text component that has specific styles for my app that I want all the text to match and I, that's what I use. The text input component is how users input text into your app and it comes with a lot of great properties like auto correction, you know, placeholder text, things like that. The text input value is always a string so if you need to get numbers from the user then you're gonna have to parse that number from the string. Okay, scroll view. If you're building for the web Scrolling is automatically applied to any content that's longer than the screen, but that's not true on mobile. So if you don't use a scroll view and you have a view that extends off the screen, that extension off the screen is just not going to be accessible at all. Scroll view is very customizable, but it renders everything inside of it all at once. So if you have a huge list of items inside your scroll view, you're going to run into performance problems. And that's when you want to use a flat list. Flat list is very customizable. You pass in data and then you define how each item in the list is going to look and interact. You have props for components for headers, footers, or you can show a component if the list is empty. The flat list will automatically update every time your data prop changes. It's a shallow quality check. If you need another way to update your flat list, there's a prop called extra data. And anytime that prop changes, that will also update your flat list. Flat list is good for most use cases, but if you need better performance, uh, check out Recycler List View from Flipkart. You also have Section List, which is very similar to flat list, but then your list of data is organized into sections, and each section can have a section header. So a good example is a contact list where you have a big list of names, but then you section it into alphabetical order. So you'll have a section of A's and then a section header of like the letter A to group those together. There's the activity indicator, which basically just, you know, displays a loading indicator animation. It's very limited. You can only really customize it by saying two sizes, small or large, and then the color. The image component is for showing an image. Image background, just a basic way to you know display the whole background image. Uh, if you worked on the web, I'm sure you're familiar with background images. Keyboard avoiding view. This can get tricky if you've never developed for mobile before. When the keyboard opens up on the phone, it covers a large surface area. So you need to adjust your view so the input is still visible. This functionality is already built into Android, but there's nothing like that in iOS, so you have to handle it yourself. The thing is, this keyboard avoiding view doesn't work well with lists. Um, you're going to have to either use an open source library or implement your own keyboard avoiding view for lists. The modal component ship with React Native is a pretty basic component. I doubt you'll end up ever using it because you'll probably use whatever modal is baked into the navigation library you choose. So if you don't know, React Native doesn't come with a navigation library. You have to pick one. There's also open source modal libraries if you need something a little bit different. Refresh control, used inside a scroll view or list so you can have pull to refresh. Safe area view adds extra padding around your views 
for things on iOS like the camera notch or rounded corners. For this, just wrap your top level view in it. Status bar uh, controls the status bar in your app. Switch, you know, just your basic Boolean switch component. I think typically you're going to build your own switch on top of this. Um, that's what I do. Or if you use some kind of UI library, um, they'll all have some type of customizable switch component in there. So let's talk about handling touches. Touchable highlight allows you to handle user touches. And when it's pressed, it allows the, uh, the underlay color to show through. Um, I usually just use touchable opacity. I never really use touchable highlight. Touchable opacity, also for handling user touches, and then it has a built-in opacity dimming whenever the button is pressed. This is what I have been using for a long time, and sometimes I use this component directly, but I also have a couple buttons that I built myself that I reuse throughout all the app, and that's a nice way to get like a you know, consistent style across all the different screens and components you're using. It's also touchable without feedback. So it has no built-in feedback. It doesn't change the opacity. It doesn't allow color to show through. There's just no feedback whatsoever. If you do use this component, make sure you build some type of like uh, feedback into it because uh, you know all elements that respond to presses need to have some kind of visual feedback. So there's the new pressable component, which if you're just starting a new app, it's probably better to use Pressable over the three touchables I just mentioned. The Pressable component is one of the newest components from React Native, and I did a short video about that. If you're interested, you can check it out. But basically, it's going to replace the three existing touchable components. There's a built-in button component. Um, it's, it's super basic, so if you just need something real quick to play around with, but uh, I can't imagine very many, you know, real world apps using the button component because it just doesn't allow much customization. And then we have virtualized lists. I don't think you'll ever use this directly. It's the base component for flat list and section list. Really all you need to know is the virtualization just improves the performance and me memory consumption. Okay, let's talk about some platform specific components. So drawer layout Android pops a little menu from either the left side or the right side of the screen. Um, I think typically you'll probably use a drawer menu from within whatever navigation library you're using rather than using this directly. Then there's touchable native feedback, which responds to touches on Android uh, and uses a kind of ripple effect. You know, and as with the other touchables, um, I would just use Pressable instead. Pressable actually has a property to enable the ripple effect on the pressable component. I learned that from somebody commenting on one of my videos, so that's awesome. The last component is an iOS only component called Input Accessory View. And what this does is it, it, it puts a view up on top of the keyboard. So you can have like, you know, an extra input on top of the keyboard or a row of emojis or, you know, kind of just anything you want, but it's only on iOS. And that's it, guys. That's all the React Native components, a little bit about what they are, a little bit about how I've grown to use them over the past few years. If you have any questions, you know, just let me know. Uh, I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching.